Educate, unlearn what was taught. Hold down the fort. Each one, each one. Now I got support. You're watching the 10,000 League, and today's video is DPRK North Korean propaganda, a cavalcade of comedy. Let's go. Getting straight to the stories, in 2014, Yonhap News Agency, a South Korean news channel, had reported that South Korean authorities had successfully captured a North Korean spy drone. However, upon later inspection, the supposed spy drone turned out to be the door of a portable toilet, a blue portable toilet, a very mangled door, so it kind of looks as if fragments of the door are wings, but anyhow. But the damage was already done because Yonhap News Agency had already superimposed a picture of the badly mangled toilet door onto a picture of Kim Jong-un to make it look as if he had a personal hand. He was overseeing the flying of spy drones into South Korean authorities' hands. Now there are so many examples of stories like this in which the media would take it completely out of purpose or purposely try to demonize the DPRK by putting out these fake stories. This is an example of a funny one, but there are a lot more malicious ones which you'll see. Here are the top 15 fake stories about North Korea that most people believed. This one comes from the British newspaper, The Guardian. They reported that North Koreans had reportedly, reportedly, maybe claimed to have been, you know the kind of language that newspapers use when they want to print the story, but they know in their heads that this is probably going to be rubbish later on. That uh, North Korean archaeologists had claimed to have discovered unicorns, or a unicorn lair. However, The Guardian later printed a retraction because the story, of course, it was not true. Uh, they blamed it on a mistranslation. I don't think it was a mistranslation. I think they wanted to get the story out and they wanted to get a lot of likes and shares, like a lot of stories about North Korea do. The truth is that North Korean archaeologists had claimed to have discovered well, they did discover a tomb which mentions a unicorn, which their version of a unicorn is actually nothing like ours. Their version of a unicorn is a quillin and it's more akin to a dragon and nothing like a horse with a horn in its head. This is like, uh, imagine North Korean archaeologists claim that British people believe in King Arthur because a book that they discovered mentioned King Arthur and therefore everybody in England must believe in King Arthur. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to think that just because DPRK archaeologists discovered a tomb that mentions uh, Quillen, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which I'm not, that they believe in it. The Guardian later printed a retraction, so they saved face. You can see the original article and the retraction in the description, so you can compare the two. It's a lot of fun. All the links for the stories which I mentioned will be in the description and you can look at that by just clicking see more and scrolling down. If you find any more stories then post them in the comments. Now I once met a North Korean ambassador and I asked him about this story, about uh, the unicorn story, how ridiculous it was of course, and I asked him, do you believe in unicorns? Um, one of the reasons I um, was interested in socialism before I knew what it was, was um, the ridiculous stories that people would say about North Korea. Uh, my favourite one claims that all North Koreans, including their government, believe in unicorns. Um, I, it's kind of a joke question, but can you tell me what you think about unicorns? <laughs> Now I wasn't taking the piss out of him, I was trying to turn the joke on the Guardian and the people who actually believed this. But the thing was, he didn't understand what a unicorn was because there's no such creature in Korean mythology. So therefore we had to explain to him it's a horse with a horn coming out the centre of its head. Execution by 120 dogs. Now this is one of those stories that hundreds of thousands of people in the West and North America believed they should have known better, apply the tiniest bit of criticism and sceptical thinking to this story, and it's absolute bullshit. 
but I am putting it here because so many people believed it. The Independent, the British newspaper, reported this story as the truth, you know, reportedly says, reports claim, newspaper claims, all this different language that newspapers use to try to detract responsibility onto another newspaper, and if it is fake, then they can't blame themselves. So, uh, Daily Mail reported will be what the Independent would say. You should look out for this language in media. The story that Kim Jong-un had people executed via packs of 120 hungry dogs, of course it was a fake story. The Independent reported it, but then the Independent reported a retraction claiming, well not claiming, but claiming responsibility, oh okay it was rubbish, it actually originated from a satire site, it wasn't true, we are sorry. Executions for watching foreign films. Now this story also comes from The Independent, and whether they had a new editor, I don't know. The Independent haven't learned their lesson, even though they have printed a retraction for the last 120 dog story. The Independent reported that there were reports, anonymous, you know, defector says something, anonymous intelligence secret super report, or whatever, that North Korea was executing people in public stadiums for watching foreign films. Now, number one, there is no law which I am aware of in the DPRK that dictates that people should be sentenced to death, or even that it's illegal for people to watch foreign films. Secondly, we live in the information age where these kinds of myths don't, don't go unchallenged for very long. A quick YouTube search can give you results for Pyongyang's 13th International Film Festival, celebrating films from the West, from Britain, from Egypt, from Germany, from Canada, from China, from Russia, all over the world, they celebrate it at this festival. I don't think that North Korea is a film that despises foreign films. They seem like a country that celebrates foreign media. In fact, there was a film that was made from British producers. It was called Comrade Kim Goes Flying. It was about a coal miner who wants to become a trapeze artist. It was made with... Um, a partnership of a, in a British travel company that were selling it and they were using it to promote their travel campaigns into North Korea too. Very fun film, you can see a link to the details of that below, like everything I mentioned in this video. So this story claiming that people are executed for watching foreign films, it's baseless, there are one, two, maybe five defectors from North Korea that come to South Korea and also say that this story is true. But that's only five or six people out of tens of thousands of people who have left the DPRK who don't come out with this crazy story that people were executed for watching foreign films. And there's no evidence anywhere, except for maybe five or six people claiming that they saw it, that the DPRK executes people for watching foreign films. The next story on the list, Kim Jong-un executed his girlfriend. Now, just like the other stories, anonymous intelligent reports claim one or two people claim to have known something which they have no evidence, some other newspaper said this, therefore it must be true and we can put responsibility onto them if it's ever wrong. This story came from The Telegraph, but it was also posted by Chosun Iblu, Business Insider, Huffington Post. I say it came from The Telegraph, but I don't know where this originated from. But I know that The Telegraph, although they did publish this story claiming that Kim Jong-un had executed his girlfriend, they also published a retraction. You can see the links for these stories in the description below. The story which they published that he did execute her, and the story where they say, sorry, she appeared on television and live and well, we couldn't get away with this nonsense story. But think about this. Chosun Iblu, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Business Insider, The Huffington Post, a lot of other media websites all fell for this. None of them ever thought, okay, there's no evidence for this, maybe we shouldn't report it because ethics in journalism, maybe we shouldn't try to deceive people just to get likes and shares on our site. It's very worrying that so many major news corporations like The Telegraph, The Independent, The Guardian are falling for such silly tricks and their editors are not applying basic criticism and sceptical thinking to the stories that they publish. They really should, thinking that these people have hundreds and thousands of subscribers, uh, social media following, uh, physical subscribers for their newspaper that's in almost every shop, you think that they'd have some kind of responsibility in their heads, that they should say, 
I shouldn't publish these stories because I'm deceiving people. But no, they go ahead and publish it anyway. It's wrong, it's disgusting. The next story, How Americans Live. Now, this was a video that appeared online claiming to be a North Korean documentary. Now, in the video, it says that American people, the people in the United States, are so poor that they live on the streets and they have to melt snow into water to drink it because that's how poor they are. Now, this story was reported by the Huffington Post and it was also, um, also uh, reported by Wired which said this message is in line with North Korean propaganda, blah blah blah. None of them have any evidence that this documentary was actually from North Korea. And that's because it wasn't. This documentary that appeared online actually originated with a satire site. Well, a satire YouTube channel. A man called Alan Hill, who's a British travel writer who very commonly publishes satire about North Korea, published this online. The claim that people in the United States have to melt snow and drink that in water to survive and that there are people living on the streets this isn't some crazy propaganda message, it's true. The United States has what's called a homeless population, in which people under capitalism, their homes have been taken away, they cannot afford it, their medical bills were too expensive, they got into a habit they shouldn't have, they were made redundant, no fault of their own, and they lose their house. And if there is no shelter that they can go to, those places are horrible, I'd say there is no shelter that they can go to, which they could be safe, they end up on the street and they end up having to melt snow to survive. They end up living or sleeping on cardboard boxes. In the United States, in some extreme cases, there are people who live in storm drains and the sewer because that's the only way that they can survive, where they can find somewhere safe. And even if they can find somewhere safe, there's no guarantee that they won't be beaten or threatened or arrested by the United States police, who are very infamous for their brutality against homeless people. like sport to them, beating up the homeless, stealing their stuff. And here in Britain, it's very common for the police to confiscate the property of homeless people. The next story, Kim Jong-il's golf score. What is the evidence for this? Absolutely nothing. But it's a very widespread rumour in Western Europe and North America that North Koreans believe that Kim Jong-un scored a perfect game of golf, or sometimes another variant of the story says that it was a perfect game of bowling. Both sports which I believe exist in North Korea, but uh, there's no evidence to say that North Koreans believe this. But the rumour was picked up by GolfManagement.net and NK News. NK News is very infamous for also publishing nonsense stories about North Korea, but even they could see past this story. The story that North Koreans actually believe this was published by the New York Times and ABC News. Their editors believe this. Sadly, this is another instance of a news site in which their editors have no skeptical thinking, no critical thinking, no brains or no ethics in journalism, and they printed this story. So, to summarize, zero evidence that there is a story in North Korea in which people actually believe that Kim Jong-il scored a perfect golf score or Kim Jong-un or Kim Il-sung or anybody in the DPRK political life has ever done this. It's only people in North, North America and Western Europe who believe this myth. It goes to show that people in the DPRK seem to know more about us than we know about them. The next story by NY Daily North Koreans were forced to cry when Kim Jong-il died. 
that people were forced to cry at his funeral for fear of punishment. There is zero evidence for this story. Reports claim anonymous South Korean intelligence reports, South Korea claims, a news agency claims, but there's no evidence for this, just like all of the other stories that I'm labeling in this video. But again, I'm saying it because a lot of people believed this, that North Koreans were forced to, on punishment of death or torture or gulag, that they had to cry at this funeral or else. So it should be enough to say that there's no evidence. After all, any claim that can be made without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. But it's also worth mentioning that North Korea is not the only country to do this. South Korea have also had cases where, mass cases, where people would be crying in the streets when their politicians died, although it's not so exaggerated as it is in North Korea. The next story, women were banned from riding bicycles in North Korea. The evidence for this? Absolutely nothing. But it was reported by ABC News as the truth that they believed that in North Korea there was a ban on women cycling, and that supposedly this ban on women cyclers was lifted in 2012. This is absolutely rubbish. Again, any claim that can be made without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. But sadly, a lot of people believe these stories, so it's my job to try to disprove them, to try to disprove this propaganda in the media which is, tries to teach us to demonize other countries. You can easily see online pictures of North Korean streets in Pyongyang or other cities or in the countryside. And if you look in the background on videos before 2012, you will see dozens and hundreds of women on bicycles. You'll see uh, in the link, you will see descriptions, sorry. In the description, you will see links of videos of North Korean streets before 2012. If you look closely, you will see men and women riding bicycles around the city. There is no evidence to say that women in North Korea were ever banned from riding bicycles. The next story on the list, North Korea claims to have won the World Cup. Now this story was reported by the Toronto Sun and Unilad. Now I know that neither of these are reptile news sites, Unilad is more like a Facebook Buzzfeed, and the Toronto Sun is like Canada's equivalent to the Daily Mail here in Britain, and the Fox News in the United States. But the story goes like this. North Korea claimed to have won the Football World Cup, and this is something that they told to their own people and was widely believed in North Korea. What is the evidence for this? Again, absolutely nothing. But there was a viral video that appeared online that supposedly showed that uh, North Koreans were looking at a scoreboard and they were celebrating the supposed victory of the World Cup. But again, this was posted by Alan Hill, the man who also posted the story about uh, how Americans live and claiming that Americans had to drink snow to survive. Alan Hill posts a lot of satire on YouTube about North Korea with very provocative subtitles and titles and descriptions and videos. None of it's true, it gets a lot of likes, but then when people click on it, they usually see either satire or something quite normal. For example, they'll say North Korean robotic radioactive marijuana walls that eat babies, and then you click on the video and it's actually just a picture of people cycling down a Pyongyang street or a street vendor or something really normal. But again, even though Unilad is not a reputable news site and neither is a Toronto Sun, I have to disprove this because people believe it. People will click on these stories and they don't know any better because most people in the West have a terrible idea of North Korean life, its politics, its social life or its history. And so people are susceptible to believing these stories. Oh, Kim Jong-un fed somebody to 120 dogs. And we know this story is probably true because North Koreans are crazy and they believe in unicorns. And we know they believe in unicorns because they are crazy and they execute people with anti-aircraft guns. And we know this because blah blah blah, fake story, fake story, fake story, it works like a chain. North Koreans are crazy, therefore it's probably true. Luckily though, The Telegraph and Yahoo News both picked up that Alan Hill was a satire writer and British travel writer and that this story wasn't true. And they both posted articles saying, look people, it's a funny story to think that North Koreans claim they won the World Cup, but it's rubbish. This misinterpretation, this idea that North Koreans won the World Cup, 
is something that only exists in Western Europe and North America. Nobody else believes this. The next story. North Koreans are forced to choose from a selection of haircuts. Or another variant of the story is that North Koreans are forced to have haircuts to look like Kim Jong-un. Now this is absolute bullshit. If, if North Korea put out a story claiming that British people were all forced to have haircuts like David Bowie, you would know this is not true because you have seen pictures of British people and they don't all have hair like David Bowie. Now, to disprove this, I don't actually have to disprove this because there's no evidence anywhere to claim that North Koreans are forced to have a certain haircut or that there's even any kind of uh, mandatory regulation. There might be tradition, there might be accepted norms for the society, you know, it, it would be unacceptable in most Asian cultures to uh, you know, dye half your hair pink and then shave one half off and then lash the other over the other side. In fact, in most, sorry, not Asian cultures, in most parts of the world that would be unacceptable. But as, to far, as far as my knowledge, there's no legal requirement for people's haircuts. There is a viral picture of a supposed list of the mandatory haircuts going around online, but it's just an ordinary hairdressing salon menu where you choose out the haircut that you want. There's nothing wrong with that. We have that in Britain. We have that in the United States and France and Germany everywhere. Why people see this picture and immediately assume oh, North Koreans are forced to do this, you know? It's not as if North Koreans would ever want a chart in which they can pick out their favourite haircut. This story was reported by Radio Free Asia. Radio Free Asia, their very purpose is to put out fake stories and demonising stories against Asian countries that the United States does not like. Their very purpose is to demonize countries that the United States wants to later stabilize and to turn public opinion against them to support destabilizing these countries. Much like they did in Iraq and Syria and Libya and Nicaragua and they tried to do in Cuba, much like they tried to do in Korea and the Soviet Union, which they eventually succeeded in the Soviet Union, but that's a story for another time. The BBC, sadly one of their editors, re-reported the story saying Radio Free Asia claims North Koreans are forced to do blah de blah de blah and the rumour went like that. Hundreds of thousands of people believe this. If you go on to Facebook stories about North Korea you'll see people commenting uh, North Koreans are stupid because they're forced to have haircuts <laughs> when actually the people commenting that are the stupid ones because they're the ones who don't understand how to apply critical thinking and scepticism to the stories they see in the news. Another story by Radio Free Asia. The North Korean football team in the World Cup was uh, tortured or punished or brutalized or imprisoned because they didn't win the World Cup. What is the evidence for this? Absolutely zero. Who reported it? Radio Free Asia again. A news media that is his, his purpose is to spread lies against Asian countries that the United States wants toppled. Now this story was also reported by the Daily Mail too, which the Daily Mail in Britain is like the equivalent to Fox News in the United States and a Toronto Sun in Canada. But again, you know, people believe this, therefore I have to disprove it. But say this to yourself. Any claim that is made without evidence can be dismissed without evidence, and there is no evidence of this story. FIFA was very concerned because the story was garnering a lot of attention, and they launched an investigation into it. The investigation found that these accusations are absolutely baseless. Radio Free Asia just... well, they didn't mention Radio Free Asia, to my knowledge. But that these reports are baseless accusations with no evidence against them, and it's rubbish, and there's no reason to persecute North Korea for these false claims. Now the next story, North Korea claims to have landed people on the sun. This originated from a satire news site called the Waterford Whisper News. It's a website, you'll see a link in the description, which you can visit it yourself. This story made the Waterford News so popular that one of their administrators claimed that his website almost crashed and it had over a million views on this story. And I believe that I saw it on Unilad once, but I, have, I don't have the link, I can't find it, I'm sorry. This is so widely believed by people, 
on social media and it was spread on Reddit, on Facebook. Uh, luckily though, as far as to my knowledge, no major news sites such as the Telegraph the Independent reported it as the truth, but it's widely believed that North Korea claims to have landed someone on the sun. There is no evidence and this story originated from a satire website. That should be enough. People should have seen the story, saw that it came from a satire site, said ha ha very funny and got on with their lives. But uh, the reason that I'm making this video is to disprove these myths. These myths, some of them are satire, some people are silly enough to believe to it, but there's a dual purpose. You should apply skepticism to every story that you see in the media. And these are brilliant examples of how so many people can be tricked into believing something that isn't true. The second is, some of these stories have a more malicious character. Their purpose is to demonize the North Koreans to prepare for regime overthrow by the United States. We've seen these same crazy stories from Iraq. Famously, there was the Nerinyu, I cannot pronounce that, the Nerinyu testimony in which a woman from Kuwait had claimed that Iraqi soldiers had thrown babies out of incubators and were killing the babies and taking the hospital equipment. This story was later found out to be not true, but it's a very good example of how the United States spreads this propaganda against other countries to demonize them and prepare them for regime change, to put in a, another government which will be more friendly to the United States and capitulate to their interests. The next story, North Korea executes military official by mortar. Now, it was reported by The Telegraph, The Daily Mail, NY Daily News, The Independent, Huffington Post, and The Washington Times. All of these news sites believed that North Korea was using these weapons called mortars to execute people. What is the evidence of this? Absolutely nothing. There is no evidence anywhere to say that North Korea executes people using mortars. Although this country does have the death penalty, there is no evidence that they use mortars for this. It's also worth mentioning that the website called Foreign Policy picked up this story about the North Koreans executing people by mortar, and luckily they printed out a story saying, look, it's obviously rubbish, there's no evidence, people can stop believing this now. So a good handout to Foreign Policy. You can see their story in the description, like all of the stories and everything that I mentioned here, you can see it in the description, and see it for yourself. And this brings us to our very last story, the story, the claim, that North Korea had launched a cyber attack against the Sony film company because of their film, The Interview. Now, The Interview was a film about North Korea. It was a comedy satire made by a man called Seth Rogen. It was making fun of North Korea, and there was one scene in which Kim Jong-un, North Korean politician, is assassinated in the film. Now, you can see why a lot of North Koreans are very upset. They think very highly of Kim Jong-un, as they did Kim Jong-il and Kim Il-sung, and they think very highly of their politicians. So to see a film like this, it, would, it upsets them, it angers North Korea a lot, but a lot of news media claims that North Korea threatened war over this film. But this is not true. There's no evidence to say that North Korea ever threatened war. There might be mistranslations, misquotes, there might be very angry reportings from the North Koreans who you know, very understandably despise this film. Imagine if North Korea made a film where they assassinate Barack Obama. Can you imagine the outrage that Americans would feel over assassinating the man who is their leader, their commander-in-chief? It feels like an attack on Americans. When they see this other country making a film about assassinating their leader, they identify with it. They're like, oh, you know, the North Koreans want to assassinate us. Look, the North Koreans made this film, they want to attack us. That's what Americans would think, in, in my belief. But um, The Diplomat writes, The BBC, NPR, Washington Post all claim North Korea threatened war against the USA. However, again, there is no evidence for this. But what makes this especially worrying is that Barack Obama, President of the United States, believed this story himself, believing that North Korea was responsible for the cyber attack on Sony. There's no evidence to say that North Korea launched a cyber attack on Sony. A lot of people believe this because the film happened to coincide with the hack, and they think, oh, North Koreans are offended by the film, therefore they are the main culprits, therefore we can safely assume it was North Korea. But Barack Obama, 
He is a man who has the NSA, the National Security Intelligence, at his helm, who can monitor all the internet traffic, almost 99% of the internet traffic around the world, who soaks up billions of emails, texts, and phone calls a day with the NSA, can access it, and has the world's most advanced military intelligence agencies at his beckoning. I do not believe that he fell for this story. I believe that he was trying to garner more support for sanctions, tougher sanctions on North Korea. And he was using this hack on Sony as an excuse and justification to do so. Now those are all the stories, but here is my conclusion. These fake stories, uh, sometimes they are a mistake, but they serve two dual purposes. One, for journalists who are lazy, for journalists who are liars and have no ethics, for journalists who just want to get famous really quickly, and they know that they can do this by spreading lies about North Korea, these journalists will post it, and they get a lot of shares and likes on Facebook, and they get a big social media following very quickly in a short amount of time, and that's their way of uh, getting very famous and establishing themselves in their career. But there's a second purpose, as we've seen with Radio Free Asia and a lot of sites that should know better. These stories serve as propaganda to demonize North Korea in preparation for regime change. A lot like Libya, the United, stories, the United States sorry, published a lot of stories about Libya to demonize them before the NATO bombardment, which toppled their independent government of Gaddafi and installed a rebel government, which would capitulate to... British, United States, and other NATO countries' demands. In Libya, during the war, they funded mercenaries, NATO bombed the country, and that's how it was defeated. An African country with no way of fighting back was being destroyed by the most advanced military technology systems ever, in, that have ever been witnessed to the human race. It was a completely one-sided battle. It was cowboys versus Indians. It was... Cowboys with guns versus Indians with bows and arrows. Currently in Syria, the United States pumps out a lot of fake stories which they can't back up. They'll say uh, Assad or Russia bombarded a hospital. If you ask them for the location of the hospital, they'll say intelligence claims, anonymous intelligence reports, blah de blah de blah blah blah. They're currently spreading propaganda to try to support British, American and other NATO countries' airstrikes on Syria to again topple their independent government and install a puppet dictatorship which will capitulate NATO demands. And this is happening also in Ukraine right now. There was a colour revolution in their country in which far-right nationalists are now in power. Saboda and their borders are being controlled by neo-Nazi militias and far-right nationalists such as right sector. In fact, the Ukrainian government right now has hundreds and hundreds of neo-Nazis under the banner of Azov Battalion. They are serving in the Ukrainian military and police. Their flag is a mishmash of multiple SS German Nazi symbols, such as the Wolf's Angle. And they are on the current front lines, fighting against the newly independent governments in the east of Ukraine, Luhansk and Donetsk. So these are modern examples. So when we see these stories about North Korea, they execute people, blah de blah de blah, by mortar cannons or a hundred different aircrafts flown with dogs, I don't know. When they publish these stories, it's very clear. It's the United States trying to get us to support regime change in North Korea. To support bombing them, to support sanctions, and to support the eventual change of their regime. Thank you, this has been 10,000 League. If you want to know what the North Koreans' perspective is and their point of view, look at these videos. These are all talks by North Korean embassy representatives in Britain. All of these talks are hosted by the CPGBML, Communist Party of Great Britain Marxist-Leninist, the party that I belong to, and the party which is advertised on all of these posters here, these four posters beautiful in the background. If you want to know more about them, look at the descriptions and link, and look at their YouTube channel, Proletarian TV, the YouTube channel of the CBGBML, Communist Party of Great Britain, Marxist Leninist. Thank you. Goodbye. I must keep fighting until I'm dying, and all a man river, he'll just keep rolling. Organizational skills, cause organizational skills kills more
devils than bullets. Pull it, the psychological trick. 